I am in no way, shape or form a fully qualified mechanic. Therefore, if you are following along with this service repair and or information video, you are doing this at your own risk. So you have been warned. Right. The 80 series Land Cruiser. Now, as we're all aware, it came out with two engines. Well, two base engines anyway. A petrol and a diesel. Now, with a the diesel, there were a number of options for you. But also, with the petrol, you really only got one option. The Mighty 1FZFE. One of the best big six cylinders Toyota ever made. People have asked Old Mate on a number of occasions, why don't I just rip out that engine and drop in a V8? And one viewer suggested I should do it right now because I'd have smiles for miles. But why rip out an engine that is working perfectly? As you can see in the background, it's 80 series time here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech. Also Q&A and advice time as well. And for this one, a viewer's asked a, a legitimate and put it in the right context as well. Am I adverse to ripping out my 1FZFE because I want to keep the 80 traditionally a six cylinder? Or am I adverse to ripping out my six cylinder petrol engine and dropping in a V8 because my 1FZFE is still working very well? Both. One of the best four wheel drives ever made. Here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech. It's 80 series time. G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. It is 80 series time here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech for Midweek Wednesday, and I've got to be honest with you, it doesn't feel like a Wednesday, trust me. This is from a viewer by the name of Scott. Hi, Old Mate's Backyard Tech, like the 80 series stuff. I know you love your 1FZFE engine, and you've often said you don't like the idea of converting it to a V8. I have two questions for you. One, do you not want to convert it to a V8 because you want to keep it as traditional as possible? Two, what would make you change it to a V8? Would it be the fact the engine finally wears out, or would there be another reason? Um, at this point in time, Scott, I am not going to rip out my 1FZFE when it works perfectly. Now, let me justify myself here. I, I'm getting used to doing this. I have to justify everything here at Old Mate's Backyard Tech. The justification for not changing my motor right now to a V8 is why fix something that's not busted. Now, one viewer commented and said I should just rip that engine out right and out right now drop in a v8 and i'll get you know miles of smiles or smiles for miles or whatever it's called why why would you change an engine that is perfectly working to drop in a 305 350 chev engine i'm not sure i can do an lml conversion or drop in a whoppingly great big cat 3508 v8 or a 2500 HD Chev diesel. What, why? What, why rip out a motor that is working and working well and is reliable and drop in a V8? If you've got the money, sure. But at the same time, you've got to do the adapter plates, you've got to change the order, you've got to redo the ECU, all this type of, yeah, right, okay, fine. If you've got the money, go for broke. I don't see the advantage right now of changing that engine. Now, with nearly 400,000 Ks on the clock, the engine is fine. The timing chain is not rattling. So wh why, why would I change the motor right now? Okay, let's say my engine's wearing out. Would I change it to a V8? Probably not. I like the fact that the, you know, it'd be different if you had a 100 or a 105 or a 200. Both of those versions of Land Cruisers have a V8. The 1FZFE can go everywhere a V8 can go. <coughs> Excuse me. This is what I keep saying. There is nothing wrong with that motor. 
if you want to change it, go for broke. But it's pointless shoving your ideas of, oh, you need to change your engine because it'll be better. For who? Even if I had the money, I doubt I would be able to come up with justification for converting it to a V8. Now, Scott puts it in a good way. Do I not want to change it to a V8 because I want to keep it as a 6? Well, the 80 came out, the same can be said for the 60 as well, as six cylinders. Now, obviously doing a V8 conversion, engineering certificates, you're probably going to have to get the adapter plate for the bell housing. You may have to change the transmission. I know some people tend to put in a 4L60E on the back of it and then bolt the transfer case up to the back of the auto. It's just really... If my engine was tiring out, I'd sooner recondition it than drop in a V8. Okay. Yes, all right, we all know that a V8 sounds phenomenal. I like the sound of a V8. Well, that doesn't mean I need to put it in my 80 series Land Cruiser. And the notion that my engine is tired, when you guys have heard it start up and it runs like a dream... I mean, you're talking about a car that's nearly 28 years old and I'm getting 400 kilometres around metropolitan Geelong, which is extra busy at the moment, obviously with the school holidays, off 90 litres of fuel. Okay, that's under 20 litres per 100k around town. And I'm pulling 550 off 90 litres on the highway. Why Why change the engine? What's the advantage? This viewer who said rip out that old engine and drop in a V8 and you'll have, you know, smiles for miles. Yeah, what's your point? Scott, it's not that I'm adv adverse to doing it. Well, right now I wouldn't do it. There's no way I'd do it. Why rip out something that's weak? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's the terminology I was looking for. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. But at the same time, okay, yes, putting a V8 into an 80 series Land Cruiser, you've obviously got better power to weight ratio. Therefore, the engine's not going to have to work as hard to move, obviously. But the fact is, is, is it was not a V8 powered car. It is a six cylinder. I am a traditionalist when it comes to the Land Cruiser. If it was a, I, I'm not even sure if I'd do a diesel conversion because that's, tedious, especially if you decide to go down the route of dropping in a 1HD FTE into it. A very late 80 version of it, or the 100 series is 1HD TF, uh, 1HD FTE. You know, 4.2 litre multi-point injected engine. Being a diesel, obviously, 1HD. Um, you know, no, I'm not... I, I don't get why you need to change the engine to a V8, and as far as I'm concerned, even if I had the money to, I wouldn't do it. It's personal choice. What I will say though, Scott, is if you are going down the route of changing your engine and you are going to put a V8 into it, don't buy a second-hand one. Get one that's fully recoded. A bolts-up rebuild. But for other people who've said to me, oh, you know, change that motor, you'll be better off. How do you know I'll be better off? Can you prove it? You might be better off. I might be worse off. But at the same time, why change something that's working? Why rip out my engine, which is in perfect working condition, to drop in a rebuilt V8, be it a 304, 305, a uh, carbureted 308, a Gen 3, an LS4, an LS1, or even an LML engine, if you can get an LML in it. What, why? What, what? Yeah, okay, so your power to weight ratio goes through the floor, therefore you're using less fuel to move your vehicle. Okay, that's one argument. Next, off-road capability. Yeah, okay, fine. More torque off a V8 than the straight six. Okay, that's number two. What's the third argument? What's the fourth argument? Fifth argument. I am a traditionalist, Scott. Therefore, if my... One FZFE was to tire out, I would put another six-cylinder in it. 
because it is designed for a six cylinder vehicle. It is not, they are not V8. The 80 series is not a V8 car. If it was a 100 series, like a 100 version 1 or 2 or even a 105, yeah, I'd consider it because they came out with V8s. 4.7 litre. Everyone knows that. I, the 80, same as the 60, are a six-cylinder vehicle. The, the, the engine bays are set up for six-cylinder engines. And if you're a traditionalist like old mate, then you want to keep your engine, whatever engine you take out, you put back in. But I, I'm not adverse to other people changing it to a V8. I'm not changing it to a V8. And especially now, because why change something that's working perfectly? What, my engine's in good running nick. Why would I change it? What, what, why? And see, I've asked this question before and never got an answer out of anyone. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, my 1FZFE ain't broke. So, so why? What, what, you know, it's like saying, um, Uh, what is it, GU2 or GU3 Patrol came out with a four and a half litre six cylinder petrol. Pretty much as gutsy as these things. Not sure about the fuel economy. I can't actually remember what litres per hundred K, but I think they were rated at about the same as that, if not slightly better than the 80. I think they worked out at 18.3 or 18.4 litres on average. But at the same time, you've got to remember that the GU, I think it's GU2 or 3, the 4.5 litre in that was coil pack rather than coil and dizzy. That's coil and dizzy. So, you know, to be honest with you, Scott, I'm not adverse to doing other people doing it. It's just that I don't want to do it because if the engine wears out in my 80, I'll just put another 1FZFE in it. That's what they came out with. That's what I'd put back in. It's like that guy, there's a video here on YouTube. I think it's a 45 series Land Cruiser. He's got a Cat 3508 in it. I don't know how the hell he got it in there. Sure, the engine's only four cylinders deep. Now, if someone's actually asked, what do you mean by four cylinders deep? Well, how many cylinders are in a V8? There's eight, but the, it's only four cylinders long. It's not the same length as a six or a straight eight. You know, how long's a V6? Three cylinders deep. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying people shouldn't do it. I'm just saying I wouldn't. I'm a traditionalist with the Land Cruiser. It'd be like if the one H, if I had a one H DT, right, the old four and a half liter turbo diesel straight six, four point two liter sorry turbo diesel straight six. If the engine in that gave up, I'd probably put in another one H DT. I might consider a one H DFT. I might, but I'd probably end up just putting in another 1HDT, a very reliable six-cylinder turbo engine. You can, look, there are plenty of people who, who convert to V8. That's their choice. They may be wanted a V8. They may have waited until their engine wore out and they're like, right, I'm going to do the conversion, be it to a GM LML engine or be it to a, 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 a you know, a Power Stroke V8 if you can put one in, so a 6.4 V8. Or a, uh, yeah, six four. Well, or a Chev fifteen hundred series out of a Silverado, five point four liter V eight turbo diesel. You know. So Scott, to answer your question, I'm not going to do it because I don't want to, and if, the way my engine is at the moment, it ain't broke, so I'm not going to fix it. Simple as that. There we go. Um, and to that viewer who claimed that I'd have smiles of miles or miles of smiles or whatever it was, explain to me why, and I, I guarantee you they won't, because I've asked this question before and never, ever got an answer. Why would I, at the moment, rip out a perfectly good working 1FZFE to drop in a V8? I don't get the point. The other thing is, that engine I've got is also, not only is it 
a reliable, well, Toyota by definition is reliable. It's also one of the strongest six cylinders they ever produced. It's a lot stronger than both the three and the four liter, the 3.4 liter and the four liter V6. In fact, I think it's actually, I'd say it's better. The, the four liter V6 may have more power and power and more torque, but I don't believe it's as reliable as the one FZFE and the 3.4 liter V6, which came out with Parado, came out with Hilux SR5, Trying to think what what other I think Surf ran it. Um, I don't remember if Tundra ran it in the US. Um, but that that was a all right engine at three point four liters. But I still don't think it's a pinch on the big four and a half liter six cylinder. Both both, you know, in in reliability. Because the one FZFE is probably one of the most reliable big six cylinders Toyota ever made. Now, I don't know about international markets, but here in Australia, the reliability of most Toyotas is, is off the charts. There we go. Stick around. We've got some IT stuff coming up for you shortly. Have a good one. This has been an Old Mate's Backyard Tech presentation.